Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the NetSuite podcast. I'm Megan O'Brien, co-host of the podcast. We have a great episode in store for you today. Jeff Hampton, Senior Manager of Reporting and Analytics at Terlato Wine Group, a leading importer and marketer of luxury beverages, is joining us. We talk all about Terlato's growth from a small store to a global industry leader, the decision to implement NetSuite, and its advanced use of NetSuite Analytics Warehouse to get even more robust reporting and insights. Just a quick note, we did record this during Sweet World 2023, so there is some background noise. Those who have been to Sweet World know what a big fun event it is, so a little noise was inevitable. With that, let's jump right in because you're not going to want to miss this episode. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. Hi, Jeff. How are you today? Doing well, doing well. Just getting over the uh, acclimation to the warmer weather here. I think I told you earlier that when I left Chicago, it was in the upper 40s. It's a big difference. It's like 90-something, 80, (laughs) mid-80s, somewhere around there, but my sinuses have definitely noticed. Yeah, well, uh, we both know cold Chicago winters, so Uh, it's kind of getting ready for that. (laughs) It's that time of year. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, Could you start by giving our listeners an overview of what Terlato Wine Group is and what it does? So Terlato Wine Group um, is a multi-generational family-owned business that imports and markets luxury beverages. And by luxury beverages, I'm talking very fine wines, spirits, and artisanal waters. Uh, We have a domestic uh, sales network throughout the United States. We import as well. Um, As the case with the water, we import from Italy for the San Benedetto water. Uh, Of course, Champagne comes from France. So Lenson is one of our brands that we import uh, from France. And we also have three wineries out in California where we sell our own brands. Uh, Those wineries being Sanford, Rutherford Hill, and Chimney Rock. And I think in total, we represent around 90-ish brands upon my last count. I actually pulled a query and saved search in NetSuite to find the exact active number of brands. And I think that was, it was around that mark. That's crazy because Terlato actually had some pretty humble beginnings. Could you give us kind of the quick version of the company's history Mm -hmm. and how it grew to be a leading wine and spirits importer and producer? Yeah, so in the very beginning, Um, It began with a grocery store in downtown Chicago on State Street, if memory serves. Um, And I think the year was 1938. And it was just a grocery store uh, that happened to have a a barrel of wine with a tap in it. And apparently you could just go into the store with kind of an empty pitcher, (laughs) fill it up yourself with wine, and... And that was a method of buying your wine. (laughs) And keep in mind, this was just five years after Prohibition ended, which kind of it's an interesting take on how uh, how laws were at that time uh, (laughs) regarding alcohol. Um, But, you know, it it grew from there because the margins for alcohol sales are pretty good and uh, was passed down from at the beginning. uh, It was a gentleman named Anthony Paterno. Um, his son-in-law was Anthony Terlato. So the Terlato name comes from the son-in-law. And then from there, passed down throughout the family uh, to the current CEO, Bill Terlato. And uh, yeah, like I said, we now have grown to a large distributor network for the entire domestic United States internationally, uh, as well as the three wineries in California. So now we can't bring pitchers to the grocery store and expect well, wine to be. You can try. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> I'm down for it. It sounds like a great idea to me. Well, so how does Tur- uh, Terlato's history influence its approach to business now? Mm-hmm. Well, I think being a family-owned business and having that legacy, um, it's kind of a rarity it's these days, especially. Mm-hmm. I mean, things tend to be uh, public corporations and people don't stay in positions for very long. And that's one thing that Terlato does have going for it is um, a number of, its employees have been there for 15, 20 plus years. 
And having that type of tenure with the company allows them to develop really strong relationships with the different distributors and, and all the salespeople you know, throughout the country. So having that relationship, having that closeness of it being um, a family owned business, it, it does a lot for sales. Um, you have that personal kind of touch that you wouldn't normally get with a larger company. Mm -hmm. So that's helped uh, with businesses. Um, yeah, and I, I think they have a, kind of a legacy of supporting other family-owned wineries and distilleries because, like I said, um, they're kind of a minority. And so banding together, it, it just helps with influencing the industry and, and leaving your mark and your brand and, and becoming kind of recognizable in that way. So I actually, I want to talk about your role at Terlato specifically because I think it gives some unique insight and it's of big interest to our audience. Could you tell our listeners about your role and what you do for the company? So I'm the senior manager of reporting and analytics. And so what I'm doing currently now that we have migrated to NetSuite for about a year now is working with uh, NSAW, NetSuite Analytics Warehouse, um, along with anything native to NetSuite's reporting system. So na it's net native reporting, it's safe searches, um, basically any any kind of data output out of NetSuite. Um, I'm responsible for doing that, uh, as well as data integrations that we have with other vendors, uh, which we manage through Boomi. Um, but that's often, most often, set up um, initially via a saved search in NetSuite so that you gather the data there and then connect to it and pull it out, you know. So my work with NSAW has been pretty extensive. Um, we really, it was a baptism by fire, um, <laughs> but I've had a good level of support from a consulting partner of ours, if I can give a plug for them, MHI, Myers mm -hmm. Holum Consulting, they're fantastic guys. Um, th through them, you know, and collaborating with my colleagues, we were able to develop sales trackers and uh, order reports that have kept us up to date with everything we have going on. And we have a really good pulse on sales now. And things are much tighter, I think, than we were in the past with our previous systems. So if my LinkedIn stalking serves me correctly, you joined the uh, company about three years ago? Uh, yeah, so I joined in November of 2020, uh, which was kind of mid-COVID-ish. Mm -hmm. Well, Strange really time weird, to join. Really <laughs> weird time to join the company. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, my role was just kind of to maintain the analytics system and systems that were there. It was kind of a set of disparate systems. Some people used Excel spreadsheets. Some people had homebrew solutions with Excel, or uh, sorry, access databases. And then we had an analytics platform that was, it did the job, but it also was about 10 years out of date. It wasn't being supported anymore from the software developer. And um, online, there was very limited resources uh, to answer any of your questions if you had them. So it was obvious that we needed to change, and uh, change we did. Well, oh, perfect segue. Uh, what was Terlato's experience like? Uh, well, let's say let's say before NetSuite, what was uh, what was its experience like with the systems that it had in place prior? Well, people were kind of reading from different books. Because, like I said, you had a it was it was a different group of systems, disparate systems. They didn't necessarily communicate with one another. They weren't clouded. They were on-premise servers. Um, you had to manage the server. Most of them were SQL Server databases. So, thankfully, I w I've been a DV DBA in a former life, so I had to handle that side of it as well. You know, um, we did use Oracle PBCS which is a clouded solution. It spoke via, I think, an FTP feed that we developed through an SSIS integration with our former ERP. It was a little hairy. And so one platform to kind of rule them all, one source of truth is what we needed to go to, what we were looking for. And that's what NetSuite offered um, in its ERP and in its direct connection to NSAW. So it was kind of a no-brainer. So I love a Lord of the Rings reference when we're talking about <laughs> NetSuite software. That's my favorite. Yeah, can't, couldn't help but throw that in. <laughs> it's true, though. It is. So I, I'm. you, you kind of touched on this with the challenges around kind of all these integrations and different 
uh, sources of truth. Were there other challenges that the company was encountering with that setup? Well, like I said, just people were Mm -hmm. reading from different books. Um, You can't go into a meeting with two sets of numbers. You can't make a decision based on two data sets, you know, and that's kind of what happens when you give people access to a large master data set and then they kind of are at their will pulling queries in off of that. Sometimes they know what they're doing, sometimes they might not, or may, might miss something and their results are going to be completely different from someone else's and they'll draw different conclusions as a result of that. So I mean that's one of the biggest issues. Um, in the world of uh, planning and budgeting, like I said, our systems had a degree of integration, but it still took marrying budget data to sales data, actuals. It was about a one month turnaround to get a report that actually compared the two. And it's impossible for salespeople to keep on top of where they're at and if they're hitting budget, uh, what they need to do to pump up selling a particular brand. I mean, with a month of uh, you know, leeway between getting the actuals in, it was just, it was becoming really difficult for them. So that's one thing we were able to solve with the NetSuite planning and budgeting module, uh, which integrates beautifully with the <laughs> ERP, as it does in SAW, which is part of the appeal. I mean, salespeople operating on different sources of information, all these mm-hmm. challenges. Were there strategic initiatives that Terlato was wanting to, to achieve but couldn't due to those issues? I think the, the biggest issue was not having one main system that everyone could go to, directing everybody to a single place and making it accessible and easy for them to go to that place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I've been able to do with NSAW, for instance, um, is develop a sales dashboard, which is fairly locked down. Um, You can put, you know, amount of filtering on it, but it's it's kind of the same uh, default view for everyone who goes into it initially. And the numbers are the same for everybody. There's no confusion. And um, I think that was the biggest strategic roadblock that was uh, that was in the in the way back then that had to be overcome. Now, Tarlato also worked with the NetSuite Alliance partner, Accenture, to implement NetSuite. Can you speak to the company's decision to use a partner and the experience of that? Mm -hmm. So as as far as I know, there was really no question that we weren't going to NetSuite. I think that's what our CIO wanted to do. So getting there was, you know, that wasn't the question. Um, But very few of us had worked with NetSuite, so it became obvious that we needed some outside help especially when it comes to developing those initial reports um, and saved searches and integrations that we had. um, That's pretty technical technical work. And there's a bit of a learning curve in learning what the different fields are named when you're building out a report, for example. So we had to have some outside help and Accenture was very instrumental in helping us uh, getting rolling with the reports and, and saved searches and integrations in that. Well, so I think you already answered my question. NetSuite was the choice, but what made NetSuite stand out compared to other options? It was a clouded solution. It wasn't one that was on-premise that was going to require us to have an off-site data center uh, to maintain and back up the the databases. Whenever we wanted to make mass updates to information, it had to be done via SQL, and that SQL had better be right. And, you know, it's just so much easier. NetSuite, for example, has an import-export tool for mass updating. It's really simple to use. Um, So things like that and just everything being in one place. And the integrations, not just with NSAW and NSPB, um, NetSuite planning and budgeting, but with, you know, there are a ton of partners. I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface with Mm -hmm. in that regard. But... um, it being a cloud solution allows for all of that. And that was the biggest win, I think. So what were the biggest immediate benefits the team at Terralato saw after going live with NetSuite? I would say the creation of workflows and the streamlining of processes is probably the very first thing that everybody noticed and appreciated. Because sometimes with our previous system that just didn't exist. I mean, you had to manually do something in the system and then manually send an email to the next person telling them to, hey, you know, I did this, it's your turn to do that. Whereas in NetSuite, you can set up workflows that automatically require you to fill in certain um, you know, fields, certain pieces of information uh, to validate it. 
and then that automatically kicks on to another person. Um, so that automation, that workflow, and the validation of the data that you enter, those are probably the first things that were really appreciated in the system and that were apparent right away that it was an improvement over how we had been doing it. So inventory management in the food and beverage industry strikes me as an incredibly difficult area. Can you delve into how NetSuite helps in that regard? So I know we use the demand planning and that has really helped. That's not really my wheelhouse. I can't talk a lot in that department, but I do know that in some cases our hands are tied uh, with supplier agreements. You know, if we say that we're gonna sell 10,000 cases, we have to sell 10,000 cases. It doesn't matter, you know, how we get them. Um, it just, you know, if we say we're gonna do it, we have to do it, we have a commitment. But, um, you know, aside from that, the demand planning, I know it's been very beneficial to our operations team. They've been able to kind of get in front of that as opposed to having it come up on them in, in the rear, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> And one thing, speaking of demand planning, one thing that seems to change dramatically, particularly in the wake of COVID, is consumer preferences around beverages. Can you speak to how Terlato is keeping up to date with that? Um, Well, COVID, it caused a lot of interesting things to happen. I mean, as far as consumer preferences around beverages goes, I think there was obviously a, a, a a change in sales that it was obvious and visual. You could see it. People still liked wine. I mean, we service kind of a high-end luxury end market of our wines. And if you're a, if, if that's your clientele, they're going to remain that way. COVID isn't going to necessarily change that. Um, where we have seen opportunity is through our e-commerce, though, website. Mm-hmm. Um, everything kind of went to the internet with Zoom, you know, and Amazon exploded during COVID. E-commerce was also a, a huge win and a big opportunity for us. We have a website, uncorked.com. Uncorked, uh, we saw uh, some sales there and we're continuing to kind of invest more time and, and uh attention to e-commerce now as a result of that. So it's kind of turned our attention in that direction. How did six out of the top seven best performing tech stocks gain visibility and control over financials, inventory, planning, and budgeting with NetSuite by Oracle? Answers at netsuite.com slash code, netsuite.com slash code. So I do want to touch on Terlato's use of planning and budgeting. What are the benefits you've seen from NetSuite planning and budgeting specifically? Yeah, so planning and budgeting, the obvious one is that it has a direct integration into NetSuite. There's no need to, like I said, I think I mentioned with our previous system, we had an FTP file feed that had to be set up and maintained. And that in itself required um, a separate role of a person who understands SQL Server and SQL Server integration services and how to code them and create the packages, all that jazz. Um, That's a whole job unto itself. The integration's custom, you know, it's already pre-made. It connects into the ERP. Um, Where we saw the benefit was, I think I mentioned, uh, like the roughly one month turnaround it took to put together sales with budget data in our former Mm -hmm. system. And now that's, I mean, it's more or less live now. So that's a huge game changer as far as getting up to date statistics on where you stand uh, and versus your budgeting. It's allowed our uh, FPNA group to get far more keyed in, tuned in budget numbers um, for this past fiscal year. And um, it's paying off. Yeah, we can already see the benefits of it in that we're far more keyed in with with certain brands selling more in certain regions, that type of thing. So, yeah. So it sounds like forecasting may have gotten more accurate from Um, implementing NetSuite planning and budgeting. It has, yeah. It has. Uh, We've been able to forecast which regions are going to favor which brands, um, which times of year even, which periods, um, months, able to get it keyed and dialed down that specifically um, as a result of, of the tool being, like I said, pretty much live data which is something we just couldn't do before. Reporting was a major pain point for Terlato prior to implementing NetSuite. Could you describe what the process was like before and how it has changed? Yeah, so reporting, well, like I think I mentioned earlier, we had a, an existing uh, dashboard system 
it was like I think 10 years out of date and it was no longer supported by the developer the users of it were few and far uh, online help was few, practically an non-existent um, but we did have it it worked making changes to it was a huge pain so once we had it set we had a the tendency was kind of just to leave it and so it was left pretty much unchanged for a number of years and that obviously is not what you want with reporting and dashboarding it needs to be an evolving system that constantly changes and grows with your business um, aside from that there were you know there were people doing things in excel which we're, we're never going to get away from excel <laughs> pivot tables and that but probably we were doing more than we needed to um, and then some homebrew solutions with access like i mentioned earlier um, it was just it was all over the place what we have done uh, now with the implementation of nsaw and netsuite as the erp is just put everything in one place all the data comes from a single source there's no um, data feeds flying around there's no delay of a, a file being processed taking a, a day to be processed and then fed into the system all of that has gone away so it's just all there in one place you can grab it all at once and it's all pretty much you know live up-to-date accurate data tarlato implemented netsuite analytics warehouse as a part of its larger erp implementation so while NetSuite's core platform provides reporting and insights, NSAW definitely takes it a step further. Can you explain why Terralato decided to implement NetSuite Analytics Warehouse in addition to NetSuite ERP? So NetSuite has you know, pretty capable resources with its native reporting and its safe searches. You can do a lot with them. You can build complex formulas with them. You can, you, can, you can go crazy with them if you want. What NSAW offers though is additional visualizations and the ability to pull in external data sources and, and I mean all sorts of data sources. We've barely scratched the surface with that, but you can connect to pretty much any kind of clouded database um, system out there. The decision to go with NSAW was kind of a no brainer simply because of the integration. Um, it's built on existing technology, which is Oracle Analytics Cloud and Oracle Autonomous Database, I believe. It's kind mm -hmm. of those two systems put together and then specifically tooled so that it integrates directly without you having to do anything into NetSuite. And it comes pre-built with a certain a, a lot of subject areas already predefined, like for the sales order, purchase orders, inventory reports, all of that uh, jazz and a number of canned reports, like I call them canned reports, standard reports that come with the product so that you can, when you implement the product, you've got, I think they're probably up to 30 now, dashboards that are just kind of there and ready to go pre-built that you customize with a series of filters, you know, specific to what you want to see. So it, yeah, it was kind of a no-brainer to go with them. Um, it, any other system would have involved far more work with integration and you know data manipulation that we just didn't have to worry about with NSAW. So as a senior manager of reporting and analytics, how do you use NSAW in your work? In the beginning, our goal was to kind of build a system that since like I said, they had been using the same uh, dashboard for a number of years. So the, the goal wasn't to be too jarring with our first dashboard in NSAW. We wanted to, it, to have pretty much the same type of information, even the same kind of look and layout so that people wouldn't be thrown off too much when transferring from one system to another because there is a learning curve when migrating to any new system. So initially it was to build out a system that was very similar to what we had um, and then to slowly as time goes on add additional canvases to that dashboard and implement new integrations, new metrics um, via the different data sources that I was talking about. Like for instance, we're able to, the latest thing is pull in depletion quantities uh, from what we're selling in grocery stores, for example. That's something that we've never had before. We've never had the ability to do it before. So things like that, that's what I'm currently doing. Working a lot with our um, financial group, uh, pulling in budget data in new and inventive ways to improve our forecasting. Uh, in, in ways that we've never been able to do before. Given that everything's in one place now, it, it's not nearly as difficult as before. 
and um, kind of taking a look. I've just now started going to those uh, those canned reports that I was talking about, going back to those and seeing what came with the product. And I mean, there's a lot of good stuff there that you can kind of customize. So in addition to building new content, I've been spending some time just looking at what's already there and realizing, wow, this is already built for me. It's going to be great for our financial team. It's, it's a great COGS report, detailed summary. And, you know, you just kind of customize it to your needs, save a copy of it and throw it out there. So, yeah. I mean, it sounds great. How does it make your job easier? Well, NSAW is a far easier tool to use than our previous one, um, which required a very unique way of coding, I think it was almost proprietary. This is just, it it has, like I said, it comes preset with subject areas already predefined. So if you want a sales order report, you click sales order and you drag it over and it gives you access to every field, which can be daunting, but uh, every field associated with a sales order. And then you pretty, pretty much from there, just kind of click and drag, click and drag over into a worksheet, which initially creates kind of an Excel spreadsheet like format like just a table and from there you can change that table into any kind of chart bar charts pie charts graphs scatter graphs uh, geometric charts if you have the kind of geo tags in there um, gosh uh, any kind of visualization that you can imagine is pretty much represented in, in an saw so you can go crazy and it and you can put links mm-hmm. back into netsuite if you like have a certain level of detail down to like an invoice, say, and you want the person to have the ability to link back into NetSuite to look at the full detail in the ERP, you can actually build that linkage in and they just click a button, right click, and then choose, you know, drill to NetSuite. So that's the little link lingo that I use. And it takes them into NetSuite and it takes them directly to that transaction where they can view it and they don't have to retype it in or anything. So that back and forth connectivity exists and that's a result of the direct integration, which is what makes it so attractive. What data sources are linked to NSAW? Right now, they're mainly Excel. Like I said, we already have direct integration with the planning and budgeting tool. Um, We have the fixed asset module, which is a recent thing. Um, All of these are internal. So there hasn't been a great, great need to go external with our data sources aside from pulling in historical data from our previous ERP. And that was done largely through Excel spreadsheets, initially just with Excel spreadsheets, meaning that they were entered as data sources and then data flows were created for them that pulled them into that autonomous database side of things that I was talking about. so that they're they're basically part of NSAW now. They're, they don't exist outside as external spreadsheets anymore. They are part of the data set um, available to you in SAW. So um, that, you know, Excel, I did try connecting to Salesforce, um, which we use with our previous ERP. We used it for the initial setup of um, new items, like new vintages, for example, of a Cabernet that we were selling. We use Salesforce, incidentally, because it did allow us to build in some workflow control so that we had some data accuracy, which NetSuite built upon times 10. But, you know, since we migrated to NetSuite, it was made it was made up redundant since we had those workflows now. So um, I initially did make that connection and it worked great, <laughs> but it was uh, kind of just uh, deprecated by NetSuite itself. And you've kind of given some examples of this, but I'm greedy and I want more. Can you give some examples of data that you're tracking in the system and how did the insights you're getting from that data inform the company and made your decisions? So the data we're tracking now, obviously actual sales, you know, we track gross profit in a way that we never were able to get as accurately as we do now. Um, Since, you know, our general ledger is all there and it's all also directly available, journal entries, everything's available in NSAW. You can pull direct um, sales numbers, allowances, uh, cost of goods directly from, you know, basically your income statement to compile um, a gross profit figure directly alongside your actual sales and alongside what you had planned for your budget numbers and alongside the depletion numbers now for each brand that we have. So 
all of that on one line for one brand, um, when you pair that with the salesperson available for that brand or their sales territory, they're able to look at that now and make decisions just based on one line of data that they've never had put all the numbers beside each other like that before um, to make instant decisions and to see visually instantly what's working, what isn't working, what areas do we need to focus on, what territories aren't selling and why aren't they selling. Yeah, I mean, having access to all of that right in one view has been fantastic. If you were talking to a company on the fence about implementing NetSuite Analytics Warehouse, what would you tell them about why they should make the move? Well, they should make the move because it's it's a NetSuite product. It's home grown, so to speak, so that it integrates directly into into NetSuite. And I know NSAW itself is it's a newer offering from from NetSuite, but it's like I said, it's built on Oracle technology that was, has existed for a little bit. So it's very stable technology. Um, but it's been perfected so that it connects directly into NetSuite and you don't have to be bothered with any of the connection uh, details and all of the tech that goes into that. And you do have to have a fairly technical um, mind to do it and to maintain it and to uh, pull in custom fields if you have a highly customized environment with your ERP. That's another thing that NSAW makes very easy is the pulling in of all of these custom fields. Um, if you have a homegrown integration, you've got to kind of maintain pulling in every custom field. Every time you create one, you have to touch that integration and tell it to pull it in, you know, and how to treat it as a, what type of data is it? How should, it, you know, is it two decimals? Is it currency? Is it text? And getting it to join with other pieces of, I mean, it can get very hairy very quickly. Um, but NSAW kind of takes all of that off your plate. So what does Terralato have planned in the near future to not only remain a leader in the luxury beverages industry, but really continue growing the business and innovating? Um, well, like I said, I, we've been live for a little over a year now. We went live initially in two different phases. One was the winery group went first, and then Terralato Wine International, which is our um, domestic distribu distribution um, that went live second. Through that process, we still, I think, are only maybe utilizing half of the features of NetSuite. It seems like I'm finding something new every other day uh, that we can, can that we can utilize. Um, demand planning was fairly recent. The fixed assets module was a fairly new addition. I think we're looking at other things too. Um, I won't go into detail because I don't want to step on anyone's toes. <laughs> um, but there's, you know, there are large parts of the system that we haven't even really started utilizing. So as we continue to use the system, our, you know, industry, our business is only going to get more keyed in and, and focused. And, um, as we grow and NetSuite's going to grow too, you guys put out, um, is it two, I think, updates per year? NSAW mm -hmm. puts out four, one every quarter. And with every update, regardless of the system, there have been some new features, some new options that we've been able to leverage. So we're kind of in a partnership together, growing together. So as long as that continues, I don't see any stopping to it. I think that's an awesome note to end on. Thanks so much for your time today, Jeff. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. It's been fun. That brings us to the end of another awesome episode. I think one of the most interesting components of that interview for me was how Terlato is using insights from NetSuite Analytics Warehouse to inform its strategy. We've all seen how consumer preferences around alcohol can change rapidly, so it was fantastic to see how they're staying ahead of it. We talk so much about becoming a data-driven company, so it's really great to see how companies like Terlato are bringing that concept to life. Huge thanks to Jeff for joining us to share to a lot of journey. And as always, a big thanks to our wonderful editing team over at Oracle and to all of you for tuning in. If you want more episodes just like this one, make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us a rating and review. Until next time. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.